What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Mark Cassara here. We're going to talk about Robert Kiyosaki today. Robert Kiyosaki is known for uh, writing the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and Cashflow Quadrants, uh, which you can probably find a link down in the description somewhere. I'll probably link to some of his, his uh, products that he's offered because I've gotten a lot of benefits over them, reading them and listening to his podcast over the last few years. Some people love him. Some people hate him. I tend to like him. I actually was just mentored by Patrick Bet David recently, and he had Robert on a uh, an exclusive mentorship session with me and you know a handful of other um, financial services agents, um, and it was it was a really interesting interesting interview that Robert gave. He answered a lot of questions about what he's preparing to do for the pending recession. Even though we're the third day in the recession, it's, J it's July third right now, and we're officially in a recession. Even though the Fed and the government hasn't announced it yet, traditionally recession is after the GDP gross domestic product drops two consistent quarters in a row. And so that's officially recession season. He's uh, widely invested in gold and silver. And he says America is good at doing one thing. We don't create anything but bubbles. We've created the housing bubble, the cryptocurrency bubble, the market bubble. And so we're going to look at some tweets he's recently put out on Twitter over the last few months about number one, price prediction of Bitcoin and when he says he's going to go ahead and buy in at the bottom. And then what he says people should be investing in over the next six to 12 months. And no, it's not gold and silver at this point. But what we like to do first is look at his net worth. Robert Kiyosaki is currently sitting on about $100 million plus or minus a million. He was born in Hilo, Hawaii, and he's the founder of Rich Global LLC and Rich Dad Company. He has a podcast. He has a YouTube channel. You can check all the links down in the description below. Here's an article by Yahoo Finance where they reported Robert Kiyosaki saying crashes are the best time to get rich. And Robert does a lot of speaking, but he also does a lot of tweeting. Here's a recent tweet from Robert that says losers quit when they lose. Bitcoin losers are quitting some committing suicide. Winners learn from their losses. I am waiting for Bitcoin to test $1,100. That's interesting right there. If it recovers, I will buy more. If it does not, I will wait for losers to capitulate, quit, then buy more. Now, a lot of people think he made a mistake saying that Bitcoin will hit $1,100. I, I think he made a mistake. He forgot to add one zero because there's, if, if you're a Bitcoin maximist and you follow the trends and you're looking at the patterns and you're doing any, any sort of technical analysis whatsoever, even if you're a beginner, you know that $1,100 is pretty, pretty pessimistic when it comes to the low for the recent crash in Bitcoin. If anything, um, my personal opinion is we'll see maybe 11 or 10,000, most likely 11,000, 12,000 dollars. Uh, but I don't believe we'll go any further than that. Traditionally, if you've seen over the course of the last, you know, decade, Bitcoin has gone up and then come down halfway, gone up, and then come down halfway, and it continues this stair-stepping pattern up. So I do not believe we're going to hit $1,100. But some people think uh, Robert Kiyosaki is, is giving his price prediction for Bitcoin. I tend to think he forgot to add a zero, maybe a typing mistake. Um, but Robert has a tendency of always trying to almost like self-prophesy. It's like a self, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. He's always talking about how things are going to crash and things are going to go to the bottom. And now one guy recently responded to this tweet and said, never believe Robert Kiyosaki when it comes to price prediction. Don't believe what he has to say. Don't take investment advice from him. Again, you can look at this chart right here. Back in 2011, he was predicting the economy crashing. And then again, in 2015 crash, and then in 2000. 17 and then 2018 and then 2020. So every year he tends to predict that the market's going to crash, but he could really be onto something because after the market plummeted in 2008, there was the housing bubble that came. And I don't know if any of you lost any property or if you owned a home at that point, but I had my first home and man, it was a, it was a rough time for us. We had just got married, bought our first home. It was a two family and our adjustable interest rate went up, our taxes went up, everything went up, and we ended up losing the house. We had to short sell it. That was a learning experience. I was only about 25, 24, 25 years old at that point. Since then, after the the, the slow recovery of the 2008 uh, real estate bubble, Robert Kiyosaki had started to prepare for another crash. Now, 
obviously you can see here, you know, 2009, 2010, 2011, we're starting to recover. He goes and says, it's a great time for the uh, economy to crash is the best time to get rich. And guess what? The crashing is not over. So he was predicting that it was going to crash further at that point. It didn't necessarily crash further. At that point, around 2011, 12, 13, it started to continually going up. We had some dips in between that time from then till now. For the most part, the market had been continually going up. If you know anything about the market, we work in cycles. Uh, market goes in cycles. It's, it's cyclical patterns. It goes up and then it goes down, and then it goes up, and then it goes down. A market is never healthy if it just goes up, obviously, or if it only just goes down. So there's a lot of ebbs and flows in the market, which is natural. Usually market cycles have six to eight year cycles. We've been in a, a market that's been trending upward for the last, man, since 2008, almost 14 years, we've been on an incline. Now we did see a slight adjustment in 2020 because of the pandemic. But obviously, we all know that that was a fluke. That was an anomaly. That was not a market crash. That was the pandemic of 2020, which was just a, a almost like a black swan event type of situation. Nobody knew that was coming. It wasn't predicted. It just happened. And within a few weeks, the market crashed. I think it was like 30 or 40 percent. And so we've been on an upward climb for a long period of time. We are bound to come down. The, the more we go up without correcting, the harder we're going to correct. And because the feds are adjusting interest rates, they have another 12 hikes to go, I believe, for the rest of the year, which is going to cause major, major, major catastrophic issues in our economy. Even Fed Chair Powell said that he cannot guarantee at this point that we're going to have a soft landing. Well, whoop de doo what do you know? We've been telling you that for a very long time, Mr. Powell. Obviously, you're too scared to just give the people uh, the truth and what they really need to know. So, guys, we're headed for rough waters right now. We have already been entered into a bear market, which means we are starting to tumble downwards. The markets are down over 30%. We're probably headed to another 20%. Not price predictions that I'm giving you. These are things that I'm hearing from professionals, economists, and people who have been following this and are very, very educated in this area. Billion dollar hedge fund managers are all saying the same thing. CFOs of all major big companies are all saying the same thing. And they're all preparing for cutbacks. They're preparing to lay off because they're preparing to really batten down the hatches for the perfect storm that is in play currently right now. We've done a few webinars over the last couple of weeks, my partner Jesse Moon and I, about how to plan for a recession, how to plan for a rock solid retirement. See, the problem is most people have less than $140,000 in their 401k right now. And there's people that are depending on that money to live. But if their money isn't properly protected, that money is going to get sucked away and bleed out because of the market and what's going to have to happen. They're going to have to go back into the workforce. They're going to have to pull out of retirement and they're going to have to get back to work. How would you like to see your grandparents, your grandmother, your grandfather, your mother or father, if they're older at 70 plus years old, have to go back to work, go work as a cashier at a grocery store or a bagger or a gas station attendant. That to me, guys, is just absolutely heartbreaking. That's why we need better financial education in our communities. We need to be teaching our children better financial habits so that this doesn't happen to the next generation, guys. So it's going to be a little rough from here on out. Let's look at one more tweet that Robert Kiyosaki has recently said. He said, and this was a big one. This is this was July, uh, this was June 13th, 2022. He said, the best investment, hear me out, cans of tuna. Cans of tuna, guys. Robert Kiyosaki, born in the 40s, been through lots of up and downs in the market. He says, right now, the best investment you can buy are cans of tuna and beans. Reminds me of that commercial in the 80s with that dog that says, roll that beautiful bean footage. Roll that beautiful bean footage. I just totally dated myself. Hopefully one of you guys out there listening to this can relate to me because you're maybe as old as I am, but let me know in the comments if that brought back some memories. Robert says, cans of tuna, inflation is about to take off. Best investment are cans of tuna and baked beans. You can't eat gold, you can't eat silver, you can't eat Bitcoin. Although he's a big proponent to gold, silver, and Bitcoin and Solana, believe it or not. Uh, so keep those in mind. You can eat cans of tuna and baked beans. Food, most important, he says. 
Starvation, next problem. Invest in the solution. Take care. And this goes in, in accordance to what he's been talking about, that because of the Fed interest rates, because of inflation skyrocketing, because of the economy tumbling. Now, I'm not a conspiracist, but he says that the federal government is trying to wipe out the middle class. Now, I'm not saying I believe that, but the stars are slowly aligning and everything is pointing to a controlled demolition when it comes to our economy. I don't know why, I don't know what for, but people have been predicting this for a very long time. It's unfortunate that I have to see it in my generation and my kids' generation because this time in history, our kids, grandkids, and our grand-grandkids are going to be learning about in the history books. They're going to be looking about looking back at the recession and potentially Great Depression of 2022. And that's going to be in, in the history books for a long, long time to come. And JP Morgan Chase, Jamie Dimon has also predicted that what's about to happen now is going to be talked about for the next 50 years. So that's currently where we're standing right now, guys. Before we leave, I'm going to give you eight steps to prepare for a market crash. My coach and mentor, Patrick Bet David, uh, owner of Valuetainment and PBD Podcast. You can go ahead and check out his channel. Link should da be down below. But this was taken from one of his slides, and I actually made my own webinar based off of some of the information that he's given us as well. But these are eight ways to prepare for a market crash. Number one is the anticipation, guys. We have to know where we came from in order to know where we're going. We have to know the crashes that have happened prior to right now to understand where we're headed in the future. That's how we anticipate. That's how we can prepare for what's about to take place down the road. Risk tolerance. Guys, make sure you're pulling your risk tolerance down because Pat says anybody that is taking risky or making risky moves right now is could potentially lose everything because we're in unprecedented times. We're in times that we've never, ever experienced in history because of everything that's happening around us, the war in the Ukraine, just lots of instability. We're in a moment in history that has never, ever happened before. There's been rough times and rough orders in the past, but nothing like we're currently experiencing right now. So your risk tolerance, you have to be, you have to adjust your risk tolerance. This is not financial advice by any, by any means, but I've had some clients tell me that they are going in their 401ks and they're allocating everything over to bonds because it's a at least a safer place to put their money. They're taking everything out of the market. Again, do your own research and speak to your financial advisor. Uh, carry cash because cash is king. Guys, Robert Kiyosaki says the exact same thing. If, if you carry cash, right, losers lose because they quit, but winners hold cash and they're able to buy things on discount. The greatest time in history sometimes comes at the lowest time in history because things are on sale. You can get them at a discount, get them at a bargain, whether it's buying collectibles or cars or homes or businesses if you have that much capital, but carry cash because when everything hits the fan and we hit the lows to where they're telling us we're going to hit, uh, there's going to be opportunity out there, guys. So instead of looking at the glass half, em half empty, let's look at it half full because although it's going to be rocky ahead of us, there's going to be plenty and plenty of ways to make money and plenty of ways to get rich and plenty of ways to prepare for a brighter future. Avoid major real estate deals. Dave Ramsey just came out and said the, the housing market will continue to go up. Housing prices will continue to go up for four to five years. Now, I don't know. I don't believe everything Dave Ramsey has to say. I don't know if I believe that, but I do know that the housing market will pro probably continue to go up for the next 12 to 24 months. And then we might see a correction in the housing market, but there's lots of different pieces that have to come together in order for us to see a correction in the housing market right now. It probably won't happen in the next six to 12 months, but shortly after that, as all markets are cyclical, the housing market is not anything different. It will go up and then it will come down and correct and reset itself and then continue to climb again. So avoid major real estate purchases. And there's definitely going to be opportunity to even make more money once the market corrects and the houses, the housing prices come down. I saw an article recently that said you can actually make more money on your home when you wait for the market to come down because you're buying it at a lower price, even though interest is higher rather than buying now at the top of the market when interest is lower, because what's going to happen is you go, you go ahead and delay your gratification. You buy a home later on down the road. Even if in interest is a little higher, interest is adjustable. So that interest rate will eventually 
come down because as the as the Fed comes out of the recession, they're going to go ahead and bring interest rates down so that it will spur on more buying in the market. And eventually you can do a refinance and lock in a lower interest rate. So you'll be you'll be buying a house at a lower price rather than a higher price. It's just strategy. It's just strategy, guys. It's just strategy, different way of thinking about it. Have a serious business plan in place. There's a video called the one page business plan or how to write a business plan by Patrick David. Make sure you go check that out on valuetainment. Uh, 5% precious metals. That's on average what I'm hearing a lot right now from my clients, myself of what we're doing and what some of my mentor and coaches are doing anywhere from five to 6% precious metals. Again, it goes back to what Robert Kiyosaki said. You can't eat Bitcoin. You can't eat silver. You can't eat gold. So don't throw all your money in precious metals, but have some precious metals in the side. Protect your career. Guys, if you're not the sharpest, sharpest tool in the shed right now, it's time to invest in your career. Start to learn your skill. Start to, start to hone in on what you're, what you're doing currently in your current job. Be the best person in your position because when layoffs happen, they're going to be looking to cut some of the fat. You want to be the cream of the crop. You don't want to be down at the bottom where you're expendable. You want to know your stuff. You want to be providing value to your business, to your boss, to your employer. That way you'll somewhat secure your employment down the road and then take a time out to study your portfolio. Look at where you're invested. Look at where your money is currently. Make sure you have principal protection included in your portfolio. If you don't know what principal protection is, watch some of my TikTok videos, watch some of my Facebook reels. Principal protection is a place where your money is protected against market volatility. There's only a few products out there that will guarantee you principal protection. One of them just happens to be cash value life insurance. And if that rubs you the wrong way, I'm sorry you've been lied to by Dave Ramsey for a very long time. It's a very good hedge for inflation and market volatility. And it's a great way to position yourself to grow a decent retirement down the road. Annuities is another one to look into. Not your old traditional fixed annuities, but indexed annuities, which go up with the market and you don't have any of the lows because of a 0% floor. CDs are a lower rate of return, but they're locked in for sometimes up to 10 years. Those are a decent hedge against market volatility. Cash in the bank is like the worst case scenario because inflation will just eat at your cash in the bank and it does not grow with any interest. Anything that's currently in a 401k, IRA, Roth, 403b, TSP, those are all in the market. So you're more at risk of losing your money due to market volatility. And most importantly, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel because we're going to be reporting on this on a regular basis. We're going to be giving you tips, tricks, hacks, ways to invest, ways to strategize on your future retirement. We're currently building a community right now. We're, we're designing a membership platform. We're going to give you guys all access to that as well. There'll be a free version and a premium version with a little more personal contact with me and my team. And until the next video, guys, make sure you live well, laugh louder, and learn to be a better you. Go ahead and share this with your social media profiles, and we'll see you in the next video. God bless.